At the turn of the 20th century, Dutch physician Christian Eichmann conducted a study on nutrition in chickens that displayed very intriguing results. He found that if these chickens were fed diets of only polished rice, they would get sick but then would recover once the rice holes were introduced back into their diets. His conclusion from this was that something in the rice itself was toxic, but that something in the hull had the cure for whatever toxin was in the rice. A few years later, English biochemist Sir Frederick Hopkins fed a group of mice a diet containing carbohydrates, proteins, fats, and mineral salts, but excluded milk from their diet. Upon doing this, he found that the mice would stop growing, but upon reintroducing milk into their diet, the mice would start growing again. From this, he concluded that something must exist in the milk outside of the introduced nutrient groups that is essential for health and growth in the mice. These early dietary experiments were essential in showing that there was a new certain nutrient group that was vital to prevent certain diseases and promote growth but it was unclear as to why or as to what substances in this new nutrient group were so important. The answer to this mystery would be given by a Polish biochemist who would stand on the shoulders of these early pioneers by the name of Casimir Funk. Funk grew up in Warsaw, Poland, which at the time was a part of Russia. Public schools were under Russia's control during the late 19th century, so getting an advanced education in this area, let alone even a decent education, required some sort of influence. Luckily for Funk, his father, Jacques, was a highly regarded dermatologist. Funk's advanced studies started at the University of Geneva in Switzerland, and he later transferred to the University of Bern to complete his studies. In 1904, at the age of only 20, he received his PhD with a dissertation on how to prepare two still bean dyes. Immediately after receiving his doctorate, he moved to Paris, where he experimented with a phenol called Lacol at the Pasteur Institute under the guidance of pharmacologist and biochemist Gabriel Bertrand. Funk's experiments with Lacol didn't go so well, unfortunately, as the phenol is poisonous and caused him to suffer severe pain and swelling throughout his time in Paris. After this experience, Funk turned his interest away from phenols and towards sugars and proteins. In 1906, he took a position at the University of Berlin, working in the lab of notable chemist Emil Fischer under the guidance of Fischer's assistant, Emil Abderhalden. It was here in Berlin that Funk began to make interesting dietary discoveries. The first of which came when working at a hospital when he found that dogs that were fed unpurified proteins lost weight but then gained weight when fed horse meat and powdered milk. Upon reporting these findings to Abderhalden, however, Funk's data was discounted due to the results not aligning with what Abderhalden expected and Abderhalden claiming Funk's methods to be at fault. Finally, in 1910, he left Germany for London at the Lister Institute of Preventative Medicine, where he could continue his dietary experiments freely. In 1911, after publishing his first paper in English, Charles Martin, who was the head of the institute at the time, gave Funk a problem to study, beriberi. Beriberi is a disease that affects the peripheral nerves, causing pain and potentially leading to paralysis. The cause of beriberi at the time was unknown, but it was known, however, that it mainly occurred in the Eastern world, and those who had the disease had a diet that included polished rice. So Funk experimented with extracts of the outer coating of rice and was able to extract a crystal-like substance from the coating. He then used groups of pigeons for his studies, feeding one group of pigeons a completely normal diet with the exception of the rice being polished, and found that over time this group of pigeons became unhealthy. When later fed the extracted substance from the rice coating, however, the pigeons began to recover. Further testing with this extracted substance led Funk to determine that it contained an amino group, also called an amine, defined as a derivative of ammonia in which one, two, or all three hydrogen atoms are replaced by hydrocarbon groups. 
he published a paper on this study later that year entitled On the Chemical Nature of the Substance that Cures Polyneuritis in Birds Induced by a Diet of Polished Rice. Since this compound contained an amine, Funk came up with a general term for this type of compound, combining the Latin word vita, meaning life, with amine into vitamine, a term he included in his 1912 article in the Journal of State Medicine. Funk did similar research to that of his beriberi experiments on three more diseases, scurvy, pellagra, and rickets, and for each of them, he was able to extract a chemical substance that, if ingested in small amounts, cured the disease. He called these four chemical compounds antiberiberi, antiscorbutic, antipelagric, and antirachidic, respectively. Further advancements into the 1920s and 1930s showed that these so-called vitamines weren't necessarily all chemically composed of nitrogen-containing amines, and so the name was slightly changed to take that into account, which is why these chemical compounds are known today as vitamins. The four vitamins that Funk discovered are known today as thiamine or vitamin B1, ascorbic acid or vitamin C, niacin or vitamin B3, and colocalciferol or vitamin D3. Funk's 1912 publication garnered him worldwide recognition, and he received a Bate Fellowship later that year to continue his research. He worked for many different pharmaceutical companies for the rest of his life, eventually moving to the United States in 1920 and becoming a citizen there. In the United States, he produced the first widely used vitamin concentrate called Oscadol, containing liquid vitamin A and vitamin D. Funk never won the Nobel Prize for his contribution to our understanding of vitamins and nutrition, but his work was highly significant for it implemented an entirely new nutrient group, leading to cures for multiple diseases and helping drive forward a healthier society into the future. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Click here if you want to see more scientific progress made during this time period. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.